I started to care about healthcare in the home of Tango, Argentina, where soon to be medical doctor, I visited uh, colleagues, physicians that had spent some time in the Strasbourg hospitals. I knocked on their doors and their fantastic memories of Strasbourg opened their door for me. And that actually allowed me to gain experiences how healthcare was provided in, in, in different settings. What an experience. And I started to think how great it would be to exchange about experiences in healthcare, in healthcare provision. So that's what it is, traveling, discovering new countries, seeing and, and caring about healthcare, that, that was a, a, a fantastic goal. So as I finished my, my, my MD, I embarked on an MBA and made it my profession. The experience with dancing came much later, when I was wondering how I could top up my, my, uh, my teaching skills and my presence in the, in, the, in the classroom. I came across a course on performing arts in education by the Mercat de las Flores, the dance institute in, in, in Barcelona. That seemed to be right for me, so I was really excited about it. It turned out to be a course for school teachers, for them to introduce dance and theater to the children at, the, um, at their care. And I seem to be the strange bird in the lot, me being about post-graded education. But for dancing, these things don't, don't matter. You're just part of the group, and for the fun, it's just the same. I got the occasional comment on letting myself go, don't think so much about it. And that's actually allowed me to experience my body and my own self in a very different way. Well, it didn't turn me into a, a super dancer, but it allowed me to realize the power of dancing for me, for others, but also in a professional way for, for, for healthcare. So, the idea for this talk came out of an exchange with the renowned Catalan dancer Ches Gelabert, who now, at age 63, was wondering about, was relating about, he adapted his dancing styles to the certain age of his body. Certain age, that was the, the wording he used, actually also in a project he did with elderly people, with people, as he says, of a certain and uncertain age. To, to prepare a, a, a performance on bodily memories. So elderly people, they don't, they're not afraid of being ridiculous. They just go directly into sensing the experience. And for Chess de la Berde, this is a very conscious exercise of linking body and uh, mind, where actually age is not making a uh, difference. They're beautiful moment, uh, movements deeply authentic and full of motion. For Chesk, this is a great opportunity for him to contribute and really make a change in people's lives. And he sees that the dancing profession has a role to play in serving, in serving society. You might know Pina Bausch, the great late exponent of contemporary dance. Her uh, renowned piece, Concerthof, has been adapted to Damen und Herren above 65, where you can see the elderly so, so um, dedicated and so abandoned in their task of dancing. And so we can see that this is not only an, a physical exercise, it's also for the mind. Tango, we're back in Argentina. Tango is particularly interesting for Parkinson, a degenerative disease that comes with tremor, limited motion and limited control. Also, the stiff muscles limit motion and, and, and cause pain. Should we make those patients dance? Is that, is that possible? And that with tango? Studies actually show that Waltz and Foxtrot are not that good at that. Tango has some specific movements, and that's about dynamic balance, turning, moving at different speeds, 
walking backwards. There's a large body of evidence that this can make a significant, dif this significant difference in the life and in the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. People having better motoric function, um, a higher, um, um, and, and particularly a better, a, better, a, a better balance. And this is important also is the uh, happiness that comes with, with uh, a dancing. The comment was, when I'm out in the dance floor, the shaking is not happening anymore. I have my moment of being normal. So if tango can do this for Parkinson's disease, can dancing help us curing ailing health systems? It looks like that it gives us better health, more satisfied patients, and this in a very cost-efficient manner. And that's what we call the triple aim. That is the yardstick we use to judge on the appropriateness of healthcare interventions. So dancing would be better than all these fantastic innovations and technologies that are out there? Well, I believe that technology and innovation will change, will, will very much change healthcare, but there are a lot of limits to it. FutureMed, now called Exponential Medicine, is organized by the Singularity University and has organized the yearly conference in San Diego as a showcase for all the hypes in medical technology. I attended it in uh, autumn 2013. A few days before, I was just taking uh, a rest in a friend's house in, in, in the West Hollywood, just about to go to the Halloween party. I realized that I'd missed phone calls, several phone calls by my sister Maria on my mobile, on Skype, and an email prompting me to call urgently. She came right to the point. Our brother Anselm died. I didn't grasp the meaning. He had just turned 50. And we hadn't even had time to celebrate that. What happened? I imagine that I would have been there with him, helping him, rescuing him. That's what I was trained for as a, as a medical doctor. And thinking that that would have made a difference actually was a big, a big relief. So what happened? Uh, in fact, cardiac arrest? I was thinking about, about all the different risk factors he, he combined. Smoking, the occasional al alcohol excess, sedentary lifestyle, and a stressful job. I had tried to talk him into a living a little bit healthier, but in vain, and I gave up. So, actually, there was an official inquiry into his death, and that meant that my presence in Europe was not immediately needed. So I decided to attend the conference despite my sadness, and I think he would have liked it that way. But wow, it was in a very different state of mind. I looked at all these innovation and technologies and thought, would they have been able to rescue my brother? I ran into Eric Topol, the author of The Creative Destruction of Medicine, Genome testing, he told me, could have allowed us to do a risk profile of your brother, while sensor technique would have helped to do, put them on him under cardiac surveillance. Usually an acute outbreak announcing with some time would have given us time uh, to, to, to act. And this would be out there in the practice anytime soon. Would that mean that he died just a little early? Well, back here in, in Barcelona, I consulted the expert for sudden cardiac arrest, Josep Brugada, cardiologist at the hospital clinic here in Barcelona. He could not see any indication for a higher risk in the electrocardiogram of my, of my brother. So it looks, it seems that he would not have qualified to be included in such a scheme. So at least this technology would not have saved him. Probably prevention through conscious living would have been much stronger in making a difference. And dancing is a great way to, to, uh, to, to contribute to that. So make him dance? He would probably laugh at me now. Well, he loved music. 
I always remember him listening to Looking Out of My Back Door by Creedence Clearwater Revival. He loved that song. So he loved music. So from there, the step to dancing would not have been that, that far. And it would probably have made a huge difference in his life. It would have helped him to connect to his body and realize what a grateful, great asset he had that was, that was uh, uh, worth being taken care of. So I really believe that dancing would have made a difference. And dancing actually may, could make a difference for all of us. And I'd like you, invite you to think about dancing if you care about your, your, your health. We might even want to start prescribing dancing to, to, to people. Our next project with CHESC is actually we were thinking of providing dance classes for medical doctors. And, and, and health professionals, allowing them to connect better to their body and thus better to their patients and providing better, better care. Thus, we would have a, a, a better body conscious on both sides of the care uh, equation, with the caregiver and, and the care receiver. Maybe even make them dance together. And probably that would make a difference for the health of the people and for healthcare, and would us help to realize the, the, the triple aim. Let's dance, if you care. Thank you.